Thanks for joining us here on the Porsche Twitch channel for all of it. Round one of the 2023 Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada. Again, I'm Kyle Heyer, joined by DJ Clark and Finney Dakuna behind the scenes as we head down the straightaway. We're about ready to go racing from Sergio Villeneuve for the 2023 Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada. Green flag flies and we're underway in Porsche Esports competition in Canada. Down into turn one, here they go. The 21 leads the way in, clobbers the curbs as they head to turn two, DJ. Looks like through the rest of the field, we're going to be a little bit too wide there from about fourth on back. A little bit of brake smoke coming down into the corner, but it looks like the whole field able to get through nice and cleanly. In 13th place with the Calgary Porsche Center into turn number one, Alex Ellis charging from behind, trying to get an overtake done on the number 69 of Brody Goble, who has gone backwards pretty quickly in this opening lap. He's learning the ways of the Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada crew. They are aggressive. Yeah, and you've got to be very careful about that overlap. It's pretty easy to defend. You park the car a little bit on the apex. Somebody kicking up a little bit of dirt there, I think, making contact coming out of turn four. That's just going to be a little bit of a scrape on the side of the car. We're going to jump back down in the order a little bit more from point A to point B. It looked like it sort of equalized here at this point. Oh, but Legier going across the curbs there. That's going to be a slowdown penalty, and Levesque's going to get that position easily. Yeah, this is one of the things I told you about is that if you make a mistake like that, it will bite you. So Leger, so let's have a look here at what happened. You see the pop out of line there uh, into turn number 12. And does that spook Leger? He just misses the corner, bumps across the curbs, and that's a big slowdown, DJ. It's going to cost him. Yeah, our biggest mover and shaker here thus far. Caron trying to do what he's able to do. We've got a spin around in front. That's Justin Ream off to the side coming out of the wall of champions. Oh, did he get to the wall too? Is there any damage on this car? It, there might be. But Justin Ream turned around backwards. Let's see what happened. Was he popping out of line looking for a pass? And does he get too much curb here on the left? Oh, he gets checked up because the car in front of him slowed up a little bit to not hit the wall. And he had to bail out of the throttle. It shifted the weight forward. No more weight on the rear tires. And around he went. Yeah, there's the checkup. You see him just have to jerk the wheel to the left-hand side. I wonder if there could have been a little bit of dab of the brakes there as well. Oh, is that going to be Ream oh. around again, going from bad to worse here on this lap for the number seven. Yeah, tires are hot. You picked up some clag on your slicks as you go offline there as well. So it's just going to go even worse for him. So looks like Brody Goble comes down into pit lane. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a penalty he's having to serve or if he's got some damage but uh, he is on the pit lane going very slow. There's a couple other cars that have joined him down there. The 23 car I see, that's Gustavo Fozzi, uh, Fozier in there. Curtis Fung is on pit lane as well. They've had some dramas here, some damage, but he's gonna roll into the box and come to a stop. So some issues now. On board with Zoran Rada Savage here, and he's got the 89 right behind him. That's Simon Terry, a little slip for Simon. And he's got Enzo Johansson right behind, willing to take advantage of it. He's gonna drop to the inside, and it's a drag race now to the hairpin, it looks like. Uh, Johansson might have it done. Yes, he will into the braking zone. If he's able to get this run times correctly, we may see Bergeron top pop down to the inside here to try to make that move work. Oh, great crossover move here. He's on driver's left, heading into a left-hander. Right behind him, Etienne Leger trying to bounce back from his slowdown. Looks like Bergeron's got the pass complete, and Leger now comes into the party for ninth place. Come on through and pick up the race win. Antoine Lacherite in the number 21 brings it home for Porsche Center. Lausen in race number one, and it's Bouchard, Fazui, Adams, and Ganon Renault. A little bit of a scrap there to the checkers as Almeida comes across the line P6. Then Guillaume Levesque, Alex Bergeron, Juliano Romagnolo, and Etienne Leger. Great battles inside the top 10 out and outside, DJ. And we get to do it all over again here shortly. But I'll tell you what, some pretty clean and great racing here from all of these drivers. Green flag flies again. We're racing the Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada door to door down into turn number one. We're almost looking three wide there mid pack as we head to the first corner. Very aggressive start there from Matt Adams. He's already up two positions there in that number 17 machine. Going to drop down one spot there. He was one of those cars making it three wide, but a good getaway from our top two of Leger and Romagnolo. They're going to start to pull away at the front of the field. Basically 15, 16 uh -oh. spots in that first race. Big dive on the brakes and smoke ahead. That's cars around, multiple cars involved. Looks like Alex Ho. I think Bartley may have been involved in that as well as it looks like a pileup going down into the hairpin. And Bouchard was involved in that. He dropped down to 18th place after all that. Here's a look at what happened. Bouchard really gets the worst end of it here, I think. Gets hit from behind and turned around. And that was the number 15 that looks like just missed that braking opportunity going down, and that caused an absolute stack up farther down through the field. Oh, man, that is 
bad news. We didn't see almost any incidents in that first race, just a couple single card things, but that was a big one down there at the hairpin, and it's frantic right now as we jump back up the road here into another battle. And Adams continues to exist, and that's going to plug him up a little bit and maybe give a little bit of time. Oh, slow, slow down, slow down. Only Almeida. Oh, man, that is going to be huge here for Almeida. He's going to drop behind his teammate, and let's go back and have a look here. It's probably going to be on the left side of this chicane again. Just gets in here a little bit too hot, trying to chase down the driver's ahead right here, hits the curb, and that wasn't even that big of a cut, but it is enough to get you a slowdown penalty. There is a very fine line, and if you cross it, you will have to give up time. Precipitated by Matt Adams being very aggressive down into the hairpin. He is going to be pushing here at this point, and look at that defense from Gagnon Renault absolutely weaving back and forth down the back straightaway. And here into the chicane, side by side, you cannot do that. Someone's not going to make it. Little touch there as they get to the Wall of Champions. Somehow, they don't clobber the wall. They come out the other side in one piece and without slowdowns. That's incredible. That is incredible, but you can see there the little bit of the bump, the absolute slide there from La Charite. And I'll tell you what, that allowed for Swilly Almeida to get himself involved in that conversation and Matt and Alex Ellis as well as Ellis tries to work his way around right now on the outside of La Charite. This is fantastic stuff. Ellis trying to work the outside here. This is a hard pass to make. If you can stick here on the left, though, they're going to no. touch and La Charite gets pushed into the wall. Here comes Almeida now with a big run on his teammate. This is getting very spicy indeed here, La Charite had nowhere to go, almost ended up in the concrete here at Montreal. Uh, Phil Bouchard is in the middle of this somewhere, and Andrew Caron is also in the midst of this chaotic battle here. This is fantastic stuff. One car off, and that's Zoran Rada Savage. He got in the short end of the stick, and that fight got booted off the track. It's the 91 car under fire. Enzo Johansson and a touchdown here into turn one as La Charite pops out of line and takes the spot back. That was some gutsy stuff there from La Charite, but he was able to make it work. He's very lucky that that didn't come to more blows, as that is a high-speed section of the track, even though you are starting to slow down. We have seen what can happen in real life when drivers make contact. They are going down into the Santa S's. And here's a lunge from behind on Johansson. That's Bouchard squeezing through. Almost they touch, and around they go. They crash, and now they're trackside here, and that is Bouchard, your race two runner-up driver. Yeah, and it looked like here that this was just a disagreement about going into the corner and who's going to be able to get the position on corner exit. You see they barely give each other, uh, give each other enough room there, and it looked like Bouchard may have given a little bit of a pinch down to the inside there of Johansson, neither driver willing to give way. Yeah, I'd have to agree on a very good race in race one and race two. Bergeron now feeling the pressure uh, as we go back a little ways. Here's a, a pass for position there as the 86 of Manalo drops a spot to La Charite, who now reclaims a spot inside the top 10. That's, El That's uh, Ellis. Ellis. And what happened here? Wonder if he cut a chicane somewhere, but it's giving up some time and dropping down the order. Around behind Guillaume Levesque, and he's ready to get the move on to Roman Yolo may have just picked up a slowdown as that's Fazui going on by him. Oh boy, this is too late in this race to have something like this happen. Roman Yolo dropping down a couple positions here as Fazui up to second place. Now look at the battle a little bit deeper in the field here as they trade spots in the final couple corners here. And that will drop Guillaume, or excuse me, Roman Yolo back to fifth place as Levesque faces pressure from Bergeron. What an exciting couple of corners there, all stemmed by that slowdown that uh, looked like Romagnolo had to serve here. We're not done yet. No, we're not. That was Romagnolo actually dipping a tire down onto the grass on the back straightaway. Cars locking up down into the corner. That's Gagnon Renault and Matt Adams, and I think that's going to be a slowdown there for Gagnon Renault. Really is putting some, uh, some drivers through their paces. Chris McGrath has had a big problem, some damage on that 379 car. Yeah, oh, and that was contact there. I think just based off of that replay, that may have been McGrath getting to the uh, braking wrong. Now, that's going to be the number 69 machine. Say it isn't so. That's Brody Goble. We were oh. talking about how great of a race he was having. That is absolutely soul-crushing for Brody. He's back in 24th place now, but he was having such a great drive and we'll have to fight it back with some damage to boot. So that's just how things go sometimes. sometimes. Some days you're the bat, some days you're the ball. And Brody, unfortunately, in race two has been a little bit of the ball. Look at this. Here's Matt Adams and Almeida again, side by side once more to the chicane. You cannot do that, but they have done it. 
they have done it, but look at this. Ian Gagnon Renault says, you know what? You're going to slow yourselves down like that. I'm going to move this car down to the inside. He's got one position. He's going to try to outbreak the number three there of Almeida down into the corner. Almeida gives him just enough space, and there Noah's Ark coming through too. Oh, last year is going to get a whole bunch of positions out of that. He's going to get up to, what is the seventh place now, and have six in his crosshairs. Damage there, but you are going to recognize a little bit of that damage when it comes to the suspension. Uh, and so the fact that he's able to keep things going around here is very, very impressive, but he's actually going to give a little bit of a, a love tap up ahead to Arthur Chan in front of him. Did you see the brake rotors glowing on these cars? Yep. The rear brakes glowing more than the fronts with how much brake bias these things have cranked in them. I think it'll let you go down to the 50 or so percent mark, which is a ton of rear brake. Here's Zoran Rada Savage battling I think is that Giovanni Romano in the three? No, that's the four of War Cup now for the Edmonton Porsche Center. Sailing off into turn one, taking a very shallow entry here, maybe to set up for the exit of turn two, but a good little scrap inside the top 15. Not a whole lot of time here left for these drivers to go. Oh, slide! And that's Matt Adams off course at turn number two, and that is going to be a big deficit for the positions for Matt Adams, who is running up inside the top 10. He's going to drop out of it now, and this is a rare mistake by Matt Adams here. Just gets into the grass on the right, DJ, and it just will not stop. Yeah, he just went in a hair too deep. May have gotten onto the throttle a little bit early coming through the corner. Oh, and Adams, I think we're hearing word that he may have just hit the wall as well. Yeah, it would add insult to injury here, right here at the exit of the chicane. Ooh, that was a pretty big hit there, too. I don't think it'll cost him any more positions, but certainly it's not going to make the car handle any better. Of course, uh, that's going to drop Matt Adams down to 11th place. Here we go side by side, though. This is farther back down in the field. Ellis able to get by Rada Savage. Yeah, that's his teammate. That's uh, uh, Almeida's teammate, Alex Ellis, dealing with Hovsen now for 12th place. A little bit of a scrap going on uh, just outside the top 10. Again, we haven't seen Ellis's pace be quite what his teammates has been, but this time he's going to get 11th place, uh, or 12th place, rather, from Greg, and he'll pass the Halifax Porsche Center car and bring his Markham Porsche Center car up into P12 here. He's going to try to get every last point. A big send into the hairpin, crosses over. What a phenomenal move there, and he's going to pass Almeida. That was absolutely textbook over under in the hairpin. Well done there. Lachereet picks up P6. Put that on a blackboard and teach it in class. That is how you do a crossover move. Lachereet with, for me, the move of the day. Incredible stuff, Kyle as they sweep on through 12 and 13, bouncing over curbs. Racine Fazui in the number 58 picks up a win in the Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge, Canada at Montreal. Second place, Etienne Leger in the number two. Then it's the triple eight, Guillaume Levesque, Alex Bergeron, P4, and Giuliano Romagnolo, position number five. There's Racine Fazui celebrating, doing the burnouts down there. But what a job well done by Racine Fazui. Uh, got the lead with a little bit of assistance there from the number two. Leger le le left the throttle, but Racine just drove away. He did not waste that opportunity to get clear racetrack. All right, guys, wrapping things up here from round number one for the Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada. Antoine Lachery brings home race one and race number two, uh, of course, uh, that was an exciting battle all the way to the end outside of the top uh, top 10 and inside the top 10 But we're seeing Fazui for Rivsud brings home the victory. Thanks so much for watching Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada round number one complete from Montreal We'll see you in Germany at the Nürburgring on March 23rd